your seat. Good morning, church. Trust you had a great week. Praise the Lord. This week will be better and greater. Your amen needs some help. Hallelujah to Jesus. The pathway of the just is as a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter onto a perfect day. So you are not permitted to have a better last week. Every new week must be an improvement upon the previous one. If you believe that something unusual will take place in your life this week, that will make your joy to be full in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can you help me celebrate the voice of redemption? That was awesome. That was awesome. And the voice of good news. They blessed us mightily this morning. That's why it's not good to come late to church. Because you don't even know your time of visitation can be during the choir ministration. Praise the Lord. You see, God has a word for everyone. It might be during the opening prayer. It might be during the choir ministration. It might be during the word ministration. It might even be during announcements. Praise the Lord. May you not miss your own word. In the name of Jesus. This morning we'll be going to part two. We started last Sunday on the excellency of the spirit-led life. The excellency of the spirit-led life. Let me do a little bit of recap. I told us last week that there is no life that is superior to a life that is led by the Spirit of God. And I told us there are two ways to live. That you either live according to to your flesh, making your decisions on the basis of your sensual perceptions. That is, allowing yourself to be led by your feelings, by the things you hear, by the things you see. Or, as a child of God, you live according to the Spirit and allow the Spirit of the Lord to influence your decisions and your actions. Hear this. Except your life is governed by the Holy Spirit, it will be practically impossible for you to fulfill God's purpose for your life. You cannot fulfill the plans of God working in the flesh. And that's why it's mandatory for us to choose to live the spirit-led life, irrespective of the challenges you are confronted with. The challenges of life will always put pressure on us. It takes those who are conscious of the fact that God cares for you more than you care for yourself to submit to God in the midst of your pressures, in the midst of your trials, and in the midst of your challenges. So last Sunday, I showed us one of the reasons why we have to lead a spirit-led life. I told us that it takes the spirit-led life to live above the situations and conditions that are prevalent in the world today. You'll agree with me that the world, not just Nigeria, don't just think it's Nigeria alone, all over the world, all over the world. Nigerians' problem might be peculiar, might be a bit more grievous, but Every nation in the world is going through their own portion of the problem. 
So I told us it takes a spirit-led life to live above the situations and conditions that are prevalent in the world today. Because no matter what happens, there is a way out. It takes the Holy Spirit to guide you, to lead you into opportunities that are available for you. It takes the Holy Spirit to show you the things that are hidden from others. We dealt with that extensively last Sunday. I'm going to the second thing this morning. Why we must choose to live the Spirit-led life. Hear this. It takes the Spirit-led life not to be a victim of human and satanic deception. It takes the Spirit-led life not to be a victim of human and satanic deception. Lots of believers today, lots of people today are stranded. They are derailed because they have been deceived. Deception is Satan's major weapon. And he walks through deception to achieve his own purpose in the lives of people. He takes a man and a woman who is spiritual, who has chosen to live the spirit-led life, not to be a victim of satanic deception. Let me say this to you, church. It is not everyone that appears to support you or show interest in you that is real. Not everybody. Some can even tell you, I love you. But there is nothing in, in their love. It is not everybody that appears to support you, that appears to show interest in you, or interest in what you are doing, that actually meant it. It takes spirituality to discern them and not submit your life and your assignment to them. A lot of people have submitted their life into the hands of their enemy without knowing. A lot of people have submitted their life assignment into the hands of those who does not care about them, who just want to use them for their own selfish purpose. It takes a spiritual person to discern such people and not be their victim. You see, lots of us believers, we are just praying for God's breakthrough. We are just praying for God's protection. We are just praying for this. Lord, do this. Lord, do that. But let me tell you here, here this child of God, if God is going to answer your prayers, you must learn how to follow his instructions. Most of your answers will come via instructions. So like I was saying, it's not everybody that appears to care for you actually cares. It takes the Holy Spirit to discern such persons. Look at an example from the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 16. I'm going to read verse 16 to 18. Let's learn from Apostle Paul's experience. Now it happened, as we went to prayer, that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us, who brought her master's much profit by fortune-telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are the servant of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. Is there anything wrong in what she was saying? No. But she was saying it for wrong reason. There was a hidden agenda behind that proclamation. It appeared as if she was publicizing Paul and what Paul was doing. 
That is why, child of God, uh, you don't follow everything you see with your eyes and everything you hear with your ears. Some of them are traps. They are meant to trap your destiny and derail you from the plans of God for your life. But I pray for someone here this morning, in the name of Jesus, because you are here, whether you are watching online or you are present here, you will no longer be their victim. In the name of Jesus. And he told me my problem. He told me what happened in my family. Be careful. Look at, go back. What she was saying does, did not make her of God. Look at verse 18. And this she did for many days. Greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirits, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of that. And what happened? And he came out. Look at verse 19. But when her master saw that their hope of profit was gone, may men not be trading with your lives. A lot of people, they have become merchandise, commodities for some people. They trade with their destiny. They trade with their lives. Because they use deception. They lied to them. They manipulated them. Hear me, child of God. Uh, your greatest need is to have understanding of God's word. Stop running after miracles. Sit down to learn and to grow. Because that's the only thing can, that can help you and save you. The extent to which you have the understanding of God's word determines how far you will go in life. This has been the devil's strategy right from the beginning. The serpent spoke to Eve as if he genuinely cared about Eve. You need discernment. You need spiritual sensitivity so that you won't play into the hands of your adversary. So that you won't play into the hands of those that hate you. Many Christians are stagnant. They are how they are, where they are, because they are played into the hands of their enemy. Eve thought that the serpent cared for her. He thought that the serpent cared about her. But she didn't know that the real intention in the heart of the serpent was to make Eve disobey God, knowing that if they disobey God, God will turn away from them and he will begin to control their lives. May you not bring yourself under the influence and control of your enemy. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, everyone under the sound of my voice who are presently a victim of deception, who are under the bondage of the enemy, in the name of Jesus, before the close of this service, may your eyes be open. May your eyes be open. May your eyes be open. The power of God set you free now in the name of Jesus. If you read the book of Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1 to 7, you will see that the serpents acted as if he had interest in it. Let's quickly run through it. Let's quickly run through it. Now, the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God has made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, 
You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Verse 2. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. See, any conversation that will lead you into destruction, in the name of Jesus, let the Lord open your eyes to begin to discern them from today. Go back. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, verse 3. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Verse 4. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. Do you know, do you know the purpose of satanic conversation? To identify your ignorance. The devil will raise conversation. Who wants you to expose your ignorance so that he can know the best way to come in. That's nice. It's not every conversation you respond to. It's not everybody you talk to. It's not everybody you open your heart to. Am I talking to somebody? Can I say something to somebody? Whatsoever God is doing for you that is working for you, learn to mature know about it. Eh? It's not everybody that is interested in what you are doing that actually wants to support you or help you. They want to corner you. But I pray for somebody. Whosoever attempt to take away from you what belongs to you. In the name of Jesus, my God, frustrate them for your sake. In the name of Jesus. Go on. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. Verse 5. Verse 5. Verse 5. For God knows that in the day you act of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. He sets the heart of Eve against God. He made it look as if God was not sincere with them. And that's the same strategy the devil is still using today. He will raise people who will deceive your hearts to make it look as if the real person sent to you by God, they are not sincere with you. If you fall for it, God forbid, you are gone. There is nothing as dangerous as living outside God's plan, outside God's will. Living in your own strength, in your own ability, because everyone that God has commissioned, has ordained to be a blessing to you, deceivers have turned your heart against them. No matter how much you pray, the only thing God will do with your prayers is to help you discern the deception and reorder your steps. In verse 6, the Bible says, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, contrary to God's instruction, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took of his fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Verse 7, Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sold fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Every child of God that is laboring according to their strength has believed a lie. Believing the lies of the devil will put you on a manual mode of life. You begin to labor in your own way. Because there is a lie that you have believed that has separated you 
from what the grace and the favor of God should be doing for you. Imagine, thank God for his mercy, assuming we are still using leaves as cloths now. How funny will it be? So understand this child of God that you need that spirit-led life. You should desire it. You should make up your mind as a believer that you are not going to be a natural believer. You are not going to be an ordinary believer, but a believer who understands the need to be led by the Spirit of God. What is hidden from your senses are open to the Holy Spirit. He's the only one that can deliver you from satanic traps. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 19, we saw the story of Elijah. Elijah's ministry ended prematurely because he allowed himself to be deceived by the threat of Jezebel. I'm showing you another side of deception. Deception is not just when somebody lies to you directly. A threat can push you into deception. The threat of sickness. The threat of the environment can push a believer into deception. Look at that story of Elijah. From verse 1 to 4, let's read verse 1 to 4 first. And Ahab told, 1 Kings chapter 19, from verse 1 to 4. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah. This was after Elijah manifested the power of God, destroyed over 400 prophets of Baal. Then a woman threatened him, and he fell for it. I prophesy over everyone under the sound of my voice by, that by the boldness of the Spirit of God living in you, you are rising above every satanic threat. Amen. Whosoever threatens you, in the name of Jesus, they will swallow back their threat. Amen. I stand on this exalted altar of the Lord. I stand in my apostolic and prophetic office. I decree over everyone under the sound of my voice. If anybody threatens you and they meant it, whatsoever they propose for you will be their Lord. Amen. It will be their Lord. It will be their portion. My God will defend you. My God will preserve you. In the name of Jesus. For you and your household, you will not be a victim of any demonic threat. In the name of Jesus. Verse 2. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. See, I told a woman of God who said, somebody called her and said, um, somebody paid them to eliminate her, her husband and all her children. I said, now for one night, no genuine assassins involve, inform people ahead of time. They strike people unaware because they know by telling you their job will be difficult. There's nobody they will tell that they are coming to kill you and you fold your hands and be looking. Am I talking to somebody? No genuine assassin will endanger their own life by pre-informing you of their intention. So I told her, that is one petty thief. He's a scammer. He just wants to play, use fear to extort money out of you. 
So Jezebel sent a messenger and said, by this time tomorrow, why wait tomorrow? If you have the power to do it, why don't you do it today? Am I talking to somebody here? You see, the devil will boast of what they don't have the capacity of doing just to plant the seed of fear in you. Every fear you believe, every fear you entertain has made you a victim of deception. Look at what happened. Verse 3. And when he saw that, he didn't hear that. They sent a messenger to him. They gave a word. He didn't just hear the word. He saw it. He caught a revelation. He caught a revelation from that word. He said, and when he saw that, he caught a revelation from the word of his enemy. Instead of catching a revelation from the word of the Lord. And when he saw that, he arose, prophet of fire, and ran for his life. I told somebody, he said, um, I want to become Elijah of our time. I said, you also have to run at one time or the other. I prepare to be like Christ. He never run for anyone. Am I talking to somebody? Go on. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servants there. <laughs> Fear. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree and he prayed, listen to that, he prayed that he might die. See how people waste prayers. He didn't pray that God should save him and pray. He prayed because this same person who had the revelation of who God was just a few days ago, who was bold to stand before the prophet of Baal, but because of one threat of one Belial woman. See, if Elijah could think well. He could have seen that the strength behind Jezebel has been destroyed. Uh -uh. The bars and all the prophets, those were his uh, strength. They have been destroyed. But fear blinded, blinded him. Hear this child of God. When you are threatened, you need to go back into God's word consciously. You need to listen to God's word that will help you not to be a victim of that threat because threats will deceive you. Every time you entertain fear, know that you have been deceived because you are not meant to fear anything. A child of God should be fearless and bold. Am I talking to somebody? There is nothing... I love what uh, Yoruba people used to say. They said, there is nothing that is coming from the sky that the earth cannot contain. Am I talking to somebody? There is nothing that will come your way that your God can't handle. Am I talking to somebody? And I tell you today, I prophesy over your life, there is no works of the devil that is permitted to swallow you. Yeah. If your amen is strong, in the name of Jesus, whatsoever come against you will be reduced to nothing for your sake. In the name of Jesus. Go on. He said, and he prayed that he might die and said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. You know, when he did this, God had to consciously work on him to get him back on track. To kill that seed of deception in his heart, but Elijah didn't allow God. Where he hid himself, God said, come out. He brought an earthquake. Just for, 
for God to show him, if it is earthquake that you need to deal with her, I have it. The Bible says it brought a wind that shook mountains. If it is the wind that you need, you commanded fire the other time. If it is the wind you need, I have it. He brought fire. At the time, he spoke to him in a still, small voice. But Elijah's heart was close. Don't let the fear the enemy has put in your heart close your heart from receiving from God. If you can't receive God's word, word into your heart, you have closed your destiny by yourself. No child of God is defeated on the account of the strength of their enemy. A child of God can only be defeated if they believe the lies of the enemy. If you read from verse 9, from verse 9 to 18, quickly, from verse 9 to 18, and there he went to a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. I want you to see the effort God made so that you can look inward into your own life. Some of you, you are in the church today as part of God's effort to uproot the fear of the devil and uproot deceptions from your heart so that it can set you back on track. My prayer for you is that in the name of Jesus, your mind and your heart will not be close to what God is saying to you this morning. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and he said to him, what are you doing here Elijah, what are you doing here? You are meant to be at your duty post. Verse 10, so he said, he defended his fear. I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, old story. Turn down your altars and kill your prophets with a sword. I alone am left and they seek to take my life. How many people? They seek. How many? One person. Fear exaggerates. You see, fear will make you to exaggerate your challenge. And the more you exaggerate your challenge, the more you submit to it. Because you give your challenge the power that they don't have over you. That's what happened. Verse 11. He says, then he said, go out, God said to him, and stand on the mountain before the Lord. Let's jump to, those are the things God showed him, the earthquake, the fire, and all those stuff. In verse 13, after God has showed him all those things, he says, so it was. When Elijah had, when Elijah had it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out. And stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? The same voice, the same question God asked him before showing him wind, earthquake, um, fire, and the still small voice, expecting him to have had a change of mind, to have been purged of the lies of Jezebel that he accepted. But look at verse 14. After God asked him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He repeated the same old story. Somebody asks you, why are things like this? You are still telling the story you, you told four years ago. You know I'm born into a family where they know they do well. In my father's family, everybody, they struggle. Get out of it. You are believed a lie. You have your root in Christ, not in your father's family. Am I talking to somebody? You have allowed the devil to deceive you, and that's why things has not changed. 
Verse 14. And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. Because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and kill your prophets with the sword, I alone am left. And they seek to take my life. He was looking for God's pity. Verse 15. Then the Lord said to him, look at God's response. Go. Return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. Since you are not ready to change your mind and believe me, since you have chosen to believe Jezebel, since you have chosen to accept a lie instead of the truth, he said, go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazel as king over Syria. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of, Sh listen to that. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Mehola, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. He was replaced in his own lifetime. As far as God was concerned, Elijah died that day. There are a lot of living dead because they have embraced lies above the truth of God and God has replaced them. Because the purpose of God will not suffer because of your fear. Am I talking to somebody? And that's why you have to understand this truth we are sharing. He said, if you are not as prophets in your... If you read that whole passage, you will discover that even when he was to anoint, he didn't anoint Elisha. It was with anger. He threw the man, just threw it on him and, and walk out the go. Thank God for Elisha, who was sentenced to him. He has to run after him. Because he knew that he used his hand to cut short his ministry on earth. Look at verse 17. It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. Now look at verse 18. He kept on telling God, only me remain. They have killed all your prophets. He believed a lie. Verse 18. God said, yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel. All whose knees have not bowed to bow, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Listen to this child of God. He believed a lie. Because of the threats. So every time you say, this sickness, everybody that it happens to died, you have believed a lie. You have what? Believed. A lie is not true. Ah, if somebody is in this situation, to recover will be difficult. That is a lie you have believed because there is no God's word that said there is something that is impossible. For with God, how many things? All things are possible. That is the truth. Hear this. Let's move a step further. Deception also can turn you into an idolater. If you are not spiritual enough to overcome it. Because deception will turn your heart away from the Lord. That was what happened to Elijah. It can turn you to an idolater. Who is an idolater? Any believer that believe in anything outside God, that depends on anything outside God. There are many believers, they, they idolize themselves because they have believed a lie. They think they have to make everything happen by themselves. They depend on their efforts. That means you have idolized yourself. You believe in your ability to make things happen, to secure your future. Above God's ability. And that's what deception does. 
Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 16 to 17. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 16 to 17. Quickly. Take heed to yourselves, lest your heart be deceived, and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Verse 17. Let the lost anger be aroused against you, and he shut up the heaven, so that there, there be no rain, and the land yield no produce, and you perish quickly from the good land which the Lord is giving you. The beginning of it, don't let your heart be deceived. If your heart is deceived, you will turn away from the Lord. You begin to run after men. You depend on men. You will idolize men. You will idolize money. You will think it is money that will make you, you will want to do anything. Even to the extent of jeopardizing your relationship with God. Idolatry. And there is no way you can experience the power of God in your life if you depend on anything outside him. My glory will I give to another. Am I talking to somebody? You, you have to genuinely depend on God if you want to see God come through for you. Am I talking to somebody here? This is the reason why we are warned to beware of the agents of deception because they can derail one's destiny. They can derail one's destiny. Agents of deception. They can do what? Derail one's destiny. Romans chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. As we begin to round up, we'll continue next Sunday. Romans 16, verse 17 to 18. Romans 16, verse 17 to 18. Now I urge you, brethren, not those who cause divisions and offenses. That is the hallmark of deceivers. Not those who cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you learned. And do what? Do what? And avoid them. Verse 18. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, he's not talking about people outside the church now. He's talking about people in the church. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by smooth words and flattering speech, does what? Deceives the heart of the simple. He said, avoid them for your own destiny's sake. Avoid them. Because if you believe their lie, one lie you believe can derail your life forever. One lie you believe can turn your back against the, your God-ordained helper. Hear me. There is nobody that rises in life that God has not used another man for. There is no self-made man. God will always use people for people. And the devil knows that as long as your heart is right, you'll be able to hear God and be led and connected to the people that God has ordained for your life. But you see, if you believe a lie, the devil can turn your heart and make you see your help as an enemy. That's why, don't be quick to judge. Don't be quick to be offended. Am I talking to somebody? Somebody did any little thing. You have all, I don't want to have anything to do with him again. The devil can capitalize on your pride to derail you forever, God forbid. Let me quickly add this before we close. How do you know if you are low in spirituality and prone to deception? If you are low in spirituality, you'll be open to deception. That's the truth. 
And that's why you, your word level, your word intake must increase so that you can be immunized against satanic and human deception. How do you know if you are low in spirit, spirituality and prone or open to deception? Proverbs 17, 4. I want us to read from Message Bible Antipathy. It looks like bombo, but I want you to use it to assess yourself. See, if people lie to you, don't lie to yourself. Don't what? Lie to yourself. Proverbs 17, verse 4. We read from Message Bible, then we read from TPT. Quickly. Quickly. Let's read it together. One to go. Evil people relish malicious conversation. The ears of liars each. If you like gossip, you're also a liar. This is, this is the scripture. The word of God is a mirror. See, if you like hearing negative things about others, that means your heart is evil. The moment somebody comes with a bad rumor about somebody, and so, tell me, you have an evil heart. You can easily be deceived. Because that evil heart has some patch of darkness. That is where the devil will hide. Let's read it from TPT and we close. We will continue next Sunday. Are we blessed? <laughs> Let's read it together. One, two, go. Those eager to embrace evil, listen to what? Slander. For a liar loves to listen to lies. Mm. Somebody said this is a bomb. Okay, check what you like listening to. Then judge by yourself. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Have you had so 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 sister in the church? Bill, like I said she don't get belay. <laughs> so how do you know? You know, see her belay they shoot out this day. Abba. Say yes. I also have been observing. You are also a liar. You're also a liar. You are open to deception. They can drag you into what does not concern you and use it to destroy you without knowing. Do you know some people have become a partaker of another person's iniquity? Because they love listening to lies. They love gossip. Church, gossip is an evil disease. Is what? It's an evil disease. It's one of the things that is holding people's destiny today. You don't know the connection between gossiping and the, you have seen it today. That you like listening to gossip means that your heart is defective. And you need a change. Because the devil will always take advantage of your de de defective heart to attack you. And he uses his lies. Am I talking to somebody? Don't look at anybody. Amen? Amen. Except the person is your gossip partner. <laughs> and just look at the person and say, I'm done with you. <laughs> I know the fellowship with you again. Let's rise up on our feet. Uh -huh, you are coming up. Oh, 
glory to God. That means you are happy with me. You have no choice. <laughs> because I'm showing you the truth of God's word. Are we blessed? Lift up your voice and give thanks to God. You see, it's such a good thing to have access to the truth of God's word. Lift up your voice and give thanks to the Lord. Lift up your voice and give thanks to the Lord. Lift up your voice and give thanks to the Lord. Lift up your voice. Give thanks to the Lord for the word he has sent to us this morning. It's a word of deliverance. To reposition us and deliver us from being victims of deception. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Can you lift up your voice and say, Father, touch my heart this morning. Purge me of any traits of darkness that can open me up to deception. Lord, let my heart be purged by this truth I've received. Let every trait of lies and deception be uprooted from my heart so that I won't be a victim of deception. Deliver me, O oh Lord, from today that I will not be a victim of deception. Lift up your voice and pray to the Lord. Talk to the Lord in a few minutes. Ask the Lord, open my eyes to always behold wondrous things from your word. That my heart will not be close to your word. My mind and my heart will not be close to your word. That the lies of the devil will not close my mind and my heart to your word. Help me, O oh Lord, to always Behold wondrous things from your world. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. One more prayer. Father, every lies that I've believed that is responsible for my present condition, Lord, expose them to me. Help me to discern it. Help me to see it and set me free by your truth. Deliver me by your truth. Every lies I believe that has made my body a habitation for sickness. Every lies I believe that have slowed down my life and destiny that does not allow me to make progress. Father, open my eyes to see it. Open my eyes. Let my understanding be open to discern it. Every lies I believe that is responsible for stagnation, that is responsible for my present condition. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Lord, let the truth of your word be revealed afresh to me and help me to break free from such lies and deception. Father, we thank you. Thank you, mighty God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are prayed. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Every seed of deception that the enemy has sown into your heart, which you have consciously or unconsciously accepted, and which is responsible for stagnation, for delay, for sickness, for affliction, for lack and poverty in your life. In the name of Jesus, let your eyes of understanding be open. Let there be revelation of the truth of God's word. May your eyes be open to see the truth. Let every 
darkness that lies has brought into your heart be eliminated completely now in the name of Jesus. I, I love that one. I don't know if you love it like I do. They shall be fresh and flourishing. See, there are people under the sound of my voice. Between now and December, people will begin to ask you, what are you using? What are you using? Which cream? Which cream? What is not about cream. It is God walking in you from inside out. Hear me? You are bearing fruit. You are becoming fresh and flourishing. Do you know why it must be so? Verse 15. Verse 15. To declare that the Lord is upright. So that means it will be unjust for God not to make it happen like that. If you are planted, you are the righteousness of God and you are planted in his house. He said to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Hear me, everyone under the sound of my voice. See, your very old age, you will walk straight. You will look fresh. You will flourish on every side. Your productivity will not decline. In the name of Jesus, your health will enjoy a boost. As your age is, so shall your strength be. In the name of Jesus, hear me, whatsoever they say is dead in your body and is not working well in your body, they say because of age, that devil is a liar. The power of God breathes.